So today we're going to create this uh, simple poly effects effect. So I'm just going to get started. I'm going to create a sphere and I'm going to go to hidden line mode so I can see the polygons. And I'm going to set it to a hexahedron because basically um, it uses polygons instead of uh, triangles. So hexahedron. And I'm going to increase the segments uh, to 64. So I'm not going to increase the segments too high because it can basically create some uh, slowdown. So next I'm going to make this editable and I'm going to create a MoGraph poly effects. I'm going to put the poly effects underneath as a child of the sphere. And for this to work, I basically need to, um, so with the poly effects selected, I'm going to go to MoGraph effector and I'm going to choose random. So now everything explodes. I'm going to make the random effector, I'm going to go to fall off, I'm going to make it spherical. So it only affects uh, the areas inside of the sphere. I'm just going to make this a bit taller and just a bit wider. Maybe a bit wider along here. So I might use size 100, 200, 200. Okay, so I'm just going to animate this very quickly. Start at 10 frames. Um, put a keyframe on X here. You just click it in a Cinema 4D version 16. And I'm going to go to frame 100. Move this, um, whoops, keeps grabbing that. Move this to the end and place a keyframe there. So we have the simple animation. And I'm actually going to make this, uh, I'm going to right click animation show F curve. I'm going to make it linear. So it's a constant speed. Just click here, linear curve, sorry, linear line. Okay. I'm actually just going to hide this random gizmo. So these chunks are uh, flat polygons, so they don't look very realistic. So I'm just going to create a simulate cloth cloth surface, and I'm going to drag and drop the sphere underneath the cloth surface, so we have this kind of hierarchy. So I'm going to click cloth surface, and I'm just going to zoom in for you. So as you can see, this polygon is quite flat, and I'm going to set the thickness to one. So now they have basically thickness these chunks just gives it that kind of extra uh, realism. So if we render this, they have uh, thickness, it just looks much better. Okay, so uh, these, these uh, pieces are static, so I'm going to add a time effector, I'm just going to click on poly effects, MoGraph effector, time. And I want this time effector to have a fall off, a spherical fall off, just like the random effector, which was 100, 200, 200 uh, in size. I'm just going to make sure it's the same size of uh, fall off, 100, 200, 200. And I basically need this to follow my random effector. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a null. I'm going to add an espresso tag to the null. And I'm just going to drag and drop the random effector and the time effector. So I basically want the random effector's X position, which is the animation, to drive the time effector's X position. So I'm just going to click here, coordinates, global position, X. Click here, coordinates, global position, X. And then just draw a direct uh, link between the two. So now the time effector should follow exactly the random effector. So I'm just going to go to the time effectors parameters and rotation is set to 90 degrees. I'm just going to make these five degrees each. I'm going to click position and I'm just going to play with uh, the X, Y, and Z values. The Z value is going to be a bit higher than the X and Y position values. I'm just going to play this back, see what happens. So now the chunks are kind of moving a bit, which is good. I'm just going to actually I'm really going to bump this value up and I'm going to increase the fall off to 
same with the random effect or fall off, just make that 100%, or uh, maybe about 65. And back in the time effector, I'm just going to fiddle with the parameters a bit more. Um, I think Z seems to give the best result because they basically move outwards. I'm just going to hide this time effector, so I'm just watching the animation. And it seems a bit slow, so I'm just going to go to my random effector and just uh, adjust these keyframes, just make it a bit quicker maybe. I think I only need about 90 frames. Okay, that's looking a bit better. So lastly, I'm just going to create a springy effect. So I'm just going to click on poly effects again. And you can see under effectors, we've got the random effector, then the time effector. And I'm just going to add a MoGraph delay effector. And I'm going to set it to, under effector, I'm going to set it to mode spring. And I'm just going to increase the strength just going to play this back. And now it's got like a nice jiggly kind of um, feel. It's pretty nice. So um, as usual, I'm just going to leave the materials and camera animations out because it's just going to extend the tutorial unnecessarily. Um, if you found this useful, please share it, and thanks for watching.